Dr. Rao, welcome back to the podcast. Always great having you on. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. So before we start getting into our topic today, um, let me ask you, what drove you into pediatric cardiology um, and, and wanting to work on young hearts instead of um, old tickers like mine? Well, I always knew I wanted to do pediatrics. Um, that was something that I always enjoyed. Um, working with kids is really a passion of mine. But I, I'll be honest, until I started my training, I wasn't clear on um, really wanting to pursue cardiology. But when I rotated through cardiology during my pediatric residency, it really just spoke to me. I understood things, they made sense, and um, I really enjoyed a lot of the learning and discovery that happens in our field. Well, we're glad you're in it, and we're glad that you're here to uh, help us learn a little bit. So um, today our topic is on heart rates, which I, I think is is talked about a lot more, um, probably because everyone's got these watches on now that tracks it. Um, do you get a lot of questions from parents uh, about their kids' heart rate? Absolutely. Um, it's certainly one of the more common reasons um, kids and particularly adolescents come to see us because I think they're the ones who tend to have these smart watches and are kind of obsessively keeping track of their heart rates uh, throughout the day. Um, so certainly a lot of questions about heart rates. Yes. So what can you tell us about it? Is there, um, I know as an adult, you always have these ideas with your max heart rate and where they should be at. Uh, do those numbers kind of line up with with what kids should uh, should see? You know, not really. Um, and that's a great question because I think um, we all kind of identify heart uh, heart rates and exercise in terms of a maximum or target heart rate, but we can't really correlate that formula to kids. So in adults, we tell people to subtract their age from 220, and that's really their target zone. But for kids, heart rate actually varies um, throughout childhood. Um, when babies are born, the heart rates are actually quite fast. And then as you grow towards adolescence and um, as you get towards late adolescence, your heart rate is more kind of normal um, in terms of what we'd expect from an adult standpoint. So using that formula across the board for kids doesn't really work because it might end up estimating um, a heart rate that's really too high for a kid in terms of their maximum. Yeah, I was going to ask, so should kids be like higher or lower on that? Like if you'd use that 220, like if you had a 15-year-old using that 220 minus the age, you'd say their max heart rate should be 205. Is that then higher than it should be or or, or, or lower? That's probably higher than it should be. Um, if you're exercising, you can certainly reach that if you're at high intensity, but that's not necessarily where you want to target. So where should kids look to go? Because we're all... We, we have these watches and these all these this data that comes to us. Um, what heart rate zone should they, or heart rate number should they target? Honestly, I think for kids, it's really more driven by how you're feeling and what your goals are. Um, there's certainly, you know, low impact exercise, just walking in probably normal, regular play that most kids engage in. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily fixate on the heart rate during that type of exercise or play. And then as you get to more moderate or high intensity exercise, your heart rate is clearly going to be higher um, the, the more intense your exercise goes. But I don't know that there's any set number that we'd want to target um, for kids. As you approach, I think, age 18 you know, or so, you're, you're probably more in that adult realm and can up apply the formula of 220 minus your age. But I think for adolescents and kids, it's really by how you're feeling. So the goal is to to get a little short of breath, you still want to be able to talk um, and and have a see an increase in your heart rate, and that tells you that you're working hard. Um, if you get to a point where you're really pushing too hard and you're feeling symptoms of dizziness or really short of breath where you can't even get a word out, and um, that's a, a time that's probably where you're pushing too hard, where I, the heart rate isn't necessarily going to tell you that. So you go more more by feel, which you know it's hard. I know we're in such a metric driven world. Everyone likes to look at these numbers and think right. that they give you some magic conclusion, but it's this is one of those where you just go with how, how you're feeling and you listen to your body. Yeah, and kids are probably better at doing that than adults. But <laughs> pro probably so. And do you, do you find that? I mean, will kids just naturally um, are they more willing to kind of shut down when their body starts getting to that point where where it's maxing out? I think so. I think particularly younger children and probably, you know, early teens are more apt to listen to their body. I'm sure as you get older and you're really trying to push harder, kids might get in danger of trying to push too hard. 
Now, if you're a coach or a parent or, or somebody and, and you're working with young kids and putting them through physical activities, what should you be looking for um, to, to make sure that they stay safe? Sure. I think, again, just really focusing on how the kid is doing in terms of their symptoms. Um, certainly, the goal is to get sweaty, to, to, to breathe hard, and to increase the heart rate. But if you start to see somebody looking like they're off balance, they maybe they're um, showing signs of dizziness or lightheadedness, they're really short of breath, working very hard to breathe. Those would be times where I'd probably encourage them to stop and take a break and drink some water. And I was going to say, what should you do in that situation? Obviously stop, but then is there other other things you should do to help them kind of recover or to watch for? Sure. I think if somebody's feeling dizzy, kind of laying them down is um, probably a good start because you want to get your head and your heart at the same level so it's easy for, for blood to get to the brain and prevent them from fainting or something like that. Um, and then certainly rehydrating is probably um, a good first step as well. How quickly do kids usually kind of bounce back when, when that happens and, and you do you lay down and just take that take it easy for a, a few minutes? Pretty quickly. I'd say within minutes, most kids are ready to go again, um, depending oh. on how hard they push themselves. Uh, the power of youth, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously we've been talking about like kind of exercise and, and maxing out your heart rate, but um, resting heart rate is also... Uh, also something. Um, where should that be with, with kids? So that really depends on the age. Um, there are normal values um, as you progress through childhood in terms of heart rates that ranges for uh, age. So a, in a baby, a heart rate range you know, from 100 to about 180 or so is, is normal, whereas for a 12-year-old, that would be a little bit high. Um, so really, it depends on the age of the child. Um, babies tend to have much faster heart rates as you get into school age, anywhere from like 80 to 120 or 130 would be um, pretty normal. And then as you get um, into adolescence and closer to adulthood, kind of getting more in the around, you know, 80 to 100 or so. So so overall with heart rates, as you get questions from parents, um, what do you tell them as far as what they're looking at and, and what they're worried about? Well, it, many times um, people will notice that just with sitting, their heart rates might be um, particularly elevated. Um, and this, again, tends to be more of an adolescent issue. So they, they also have the smart watches and they may notice that they're just sitting and resting and their heart rates persistently 120 or so. That's too high um, for a resting heart rate for a teenager, for example. And so that would be a situation where it would be worthwhile coming to see us and doing some testing to see um, is this a pattern that exists um, most of the time? Um, and is there a reason or do we need to look into this further? Now, if you start noticing some unusual activity and heart rates are kind of jumping around, um, what's typical practice? Like if somebody comes in and they see you, uh, what happens after that? Um, oftentimes, if you come in with a complaint that your heart rate is nor abnormally high, and you're not exercising and it's just at rest, then a kind of a first step would be to do a monitor, um, something called a Holter monitor or a ambulatory monitor, which basically monitors the heart rhythm and heart rate over a, a period of time, like 24 to 48 hours, and then gives us all of this data to look through. And we ask families and patients to correlate their symptoms. So if they're feeling something at the time that they should make a note of that. So we can then correlate what we're seeing on the monitor with what they're feeling. So it sounds like a heart rate, it's an important tool, obviously, or measurement to take. Um, you get a lot of information out of it, but don't get overly concerned with numbers that you're getting off of your watch. Correct. Yes. Your body responds to a lot of different things. So your heart rate is, um, in response to how you're feeling, what you're doing, if you're scared, excited, nervous, those are all reasons that the heart rate might be a little bit high, even if you're resting. Um, and certainly if you're exercising or have just exercised, it's expected for the heart rate to be higher. Do kids even have more variety in that? Because obviously when you're young, just everything is, your, your body's going nuts all the time. Um, does, it, does it just jump around naturally? I can, because I, I also think kids' emotions are all over the place too. Um, you know, they might be anxious one minute and feel fine the next, or they're excited about a video game they're playing, and that can certainly drive your heart rate up as well. So 
sure, there's a lot of variability that can occur. Overall with parents, and should you pay attention to this, these heart rate numbers that you see or just focus more on just how your kid is feeling and doing? I think really more um, how the kid is feeling and doing. I think every exercise and just a general healthy lifestyle is what um, I encourage all my patients to follow. And um, really when heart rates are really high or families are particularly worried, one question I often ask them, is it too fast to count? Um, and if they say yes, then that might make me concerned that there's some abnormality in the heart rhythm that's taking place. I think every parent, were, you you fear the worst all the time with, with your kids. If there's anything, if they're having a chest pain or something like that. Um, I think the key is just to come in, get it looked at. And most of the time, it is just a, a sign of growing up. Right. Exactly. Um, we've covered a lot. You've given us a lot to think about. A lot of numbers uh, for the math people here. <laughs> anything else you'd like to add or something that we missed? Um, you know, really, again, read some reassurance that um, in general, really fixating on the numbers is not the goal. I think really taking a step back and seeing how is the child doing? How do they look? How are they feeling? And then kind of responding to that is probably a more useful tool um, than just looking at the heart rate in terms of, of exercise in particular. That is great advice to end on, Dr. Rao. So thank you so much for being with us today and uh, look forward to having you back. Thanks, John.